the bowl elimination game. And first for UCLA, if they lose this afternoon, they're faced with the task of sweeping Arizona, Washington, and USC. That's not going to happen. Oregon State, on the other hand, they have a 3-0 non-conference record, 0-3 in the Pac-10. With a win this afternoon, they've got a good shot at their first winning record since 1970. UCLA, of course, is a big play team, and Danny Farmer is the biggest player of this big play team. He's not going to be available very much today, if at all. It really puts the onus on a young guy by the name of Freddie Mitchell. Yeah, keep an eye on number three right here. First round NFL draft type talent. He harkens back to the days of the late 80s, University of Miami, Florida State receivers. An exciting young man to watch catch the football. Bruins are going to rely on him heavily. You know, speaking of exciting young men, I think there's one that plays right here in Corvallis. Ken Simonton for Oregon State, maybe the best player that not too many people in America have ever heard of. No doubt. Ken Simonton right now, one of the top five rushers in the country. Seven consecutive 100-yard games. And the spread offense for Dennis Erickson, it gives him the opportunity to run inside the box with less defenders. He's great running the football in between the tackles. Ken Simonton's been getting it done, but he's been getting it done with a very sore thumb. He's had it in a cast all week long. Dennis Erickson says this time we're going to try to run the ball right. Why run it right? Because that's his good hand. He doesn't want any more fumbles, any more turnovers. Bruins and the Beavers when we come back. And we welcome you back to Corvallis, Oregon. We're at Reeser Stadium here. Another near sellout crowd. Be within a few hundred people of a sellout, we expect. Very much in favor of the home team. They are really confident that this team can go 6-5 and five and with it go to a bowl game. And with that, we'll take it out of the field, meet the third member of our broadcast team. He, of course, is Larry Burnett. Larry, what's up? Guys, a couple of stories to watch today. The Oregon State offense has been on the rise. The UCLA offense has been on the rocks. I want you to look at a couple of numbers here. You see how the Bruins' total yards are down from last year. And then you compare the Bruins' yards this year to Oregon State's this year. And wow, those numbers that Oregon State's putting up has them number two in the country in total yardage. And the UCLA passing game has struggled, too. But then, hey, they lost Cade McNown, and they lost a very talented and experienced offensive line. Quarterback for the Bruins today will be redshirt freshman Corey Poss. He was 8 for 29 last week against Cal. Look for OSU to throw a lot of different looks, a lot of different coverages at him, try to confuse the young quarterback, also stack the line, try to slow down the UCLA running game, and force Corey Poss to throw the football. Jonathan Ogden runs the show for Oregon State. He put it up 41 times last week against Stanford, and today he'll be taking aim at a UCLA secondary that has struggled all season long. Barry, up to you. All right, thanks very much, Larry. That's really the story of the game. It is imperative upon the UCLA Bruins to keep the Oregon State offense off the field. We'll come back, see if they can do it after this. We well, welcome you back. Absolutely beautiful conditions for a football game here in Corvallis. We're at Research Stadium, and we are set to go. The Beavers won the toss. They want the football. I think that's to be expected. We see a lot of deferring on the toss of the coin these days. Not so for the Oregon State Beavers. They figure if they're going to win it, they're going to win it with their offense, and they want them there in a hurry. Fixie will kick it off for UCLA. Prescott and Hushmanzada will be the deep men for the Oregon State Beavers. Prescott to the bottom of your screen. And here's a guy who's as ready to go as Prescott and Hushman's on it. And Pixie's kick, an excellent kick. It's going to be way out of the end zone. There'll be no return. The Beavers will start at the 20-yard line. And they are led by Jonathan Smith. And Smith, the guy, it's interesting. Talking to Bobby Toledo yesterday, he said, no, Smith reminds me of. I said, who? He said, me. <laughs> Same stature, 5'10", a great quarterback in San Francisco State was Bob Toledo. On the offensive line, Aaron Cook has started uh, every game since he's been here at Oregon State, a guy who conceivably could play on Sundays. Martin Maurer is now 100%, and we expect to see him a lot more. They've been going to five wideouts almost exclusively when Maurer was down with an injury. Now he's back. So we expect to see more four wideouts and Maurer in a tight end. First offensive snap. And again, it's the side. And then Simonton gets a couple to the 22. Ken Coker makes the stop. Defensively for UCLA, Kenyon Coleman, a guy who can really put a lot of pressure on Smith off the edge. And UCLA feels that they need to do that today to be effective on the defensive side of the football. Robert Thomas will be one of only two, and in some cases only one linebacker, depending on what this team does in the secondary. They will start. Their base defense will be a nickel defense. That's why we show you five defensive backs. Rock is a guy who is playing the corner, but really more suited at the safety position. Second down, call it nine. 
play fake, Smith the throw to Maurer incomplete. I really like this Oregon State offense, though, David. I mean, they spread you out, and they really make a defense, be honest. Yeah, they do more than spread you out. What they do is they come in with three, four, sometimes five wide receivers, and then they'll count your defensive numbers inside the box, up near the football, and if you don't have enough defenders to work against the run, they give it to Simonton, one of the most talented backs on the West Coast. So third down now, and eight. This is a situation that Dennis Archer does not like to see his team in. It's a very difficult situation for any team, but particularly for one that runs the type of offense that Oregon State does. The pressure comes from the Bruins. Smith has time. Throw. Caught this time. And that's going to be a big gain by Mongero Jones all the way out to the 43-yard line. And that's what happens when you try and tee off on Smith. Well, and not only tee off on Smith, but a big part of today's defensive game, fan, game plan for UCLA, Bob Field, the defensive coordinator, wants to bring pressure against that one back set. Two out of the first three plays here, blitzes. And right here, the Bruins get caught in the blitz. Mongero Jones switching his hand, switching hands with the ball right there to protect on the tackle. And when you have man-to-man -man coverage, it's great to have those crossing routes to go to as a quarterback. And it was Ken Simonton, a little guy, who picked up the blitzer that time. And that allowed the time for Smith to hit Jones. Smith and Jones. Nothing fancy. Here's a screen. Come back across the green. To Simon at midfield. 45-40. Spins by a man. Go to his feet. 35. Trying to get to the outside. Inside the 30-yard line of the 28. Run down by Ryan Neese. How good was Ken Simonton? on that 29-yard game. Well, Ken Simonton is an excellent back receiving, coming out of the backfield. The thumb has bothered him some, but they have a nice little package of plays they can go to, and they go back against the grain. They get a nice wall set up. Beautiful blocking downfield. That's the 35th play of more than 25 yards for Ken Simonton. That's that's the true definition of a big play back. Battle is the lone setback now. And they give it to Battle. And he battles, but he doesn't get much. He's got a couple. About the 26 yard line. That's one of the rare times that you'll see Simonton spelled. Occasionally, they'll bring in Antonio Battle, but Simonton gets the brunt of the carries. We look at the defensive woes for the UCLA Bruins over the course of the season. A lot of breakdowns, tackling once again a problem that 98 season. So it'll be second down and nine. Simon from back in the ball game. This time they bring Tompkins to the near side. A slot left with Prescott in the slot. Straight back, five-step drop. Throw. Tompkins was open, but Smith just couldn't get it to him. And that was six points. Ryan Rock defending, but Tompkins had him beat. Well, if you're going to get beat, you want to get beat to the outside where it's a tougher throw for the quarterback. And Tompkins on a fade route. That was his own defense. And Dennis Erickson saying, we missed one right there. Not an easy throw, but a good throw, and you get six points. Dennis Erickson's record as a head coach in college football, seven among active coaches. That's pretty impressive. A couple national titles under his belt at the University of Miami as well. He's won everywhere. He's won at places where you expect him to win. He's won at places where you don't. Smith again throws. Caught by Simon. First down, Beavers at about the 17-yard line. Strakula on the stop. But they're going to rule that down. No fumble on that play. Obviously, Strakula coming up to make the tackle, but you get a look right there at the accuracy and the quick release of Jonathan Smith. Now, obviously, Simonton with a knee down before the ball came loose. Here's another look at Smith in the pocket, the quick release. Ball a little bit behind Simonton, but Simonton has the hands to take care of that ball. Oregon State has struggled a little bit when they've gotten here. But they're going to help Simonton out here. They've never had a lead blocker for him, and they've gotten deep in the te other team's territory. Simonton, again, bounces off one man, stays on his feet, then is bent backwards at the 12-yard line. Picked up five on the play. Pete Holland on the tackle. Yeah, it's going to be one of the big storylines of this football game for Oregon State. How can they handle the football? Turnovers have cost them dearly in their three losses in the Pac-10. A couple of defensive touchdowns for USC and Washington against Oregon State. Then last week, Simonton 
Two fumbles inside Stanford's 10-yard line. One of those fumbles was a mix-up between Jonathan Smith and Simonton, but they have had trouble finishing off drives. Simonton out of the ballgame once again in battle as the setback. Trips right set this time with a tight end to the left side. Smith straight back, short drop, throws underneath. Catch is made that time by Prescott. Prescott is stopped at the eight-yard line. It'll be about a yard and a half, about a yard, I'd say, short of the first down. And a nice wide receiver core for Oregon State. The four top wide receivers all averaging over 14 yards a catch. Maurer, the tight end, averaging over 20 yards a catch. And on that last play, if Jonathan Smith can get the ball up a little bit, keeps Prescott up, Prescott has a chance to pick up the first down. Two tight ends in the game now. Johnson, two wide outs and battle a long setback. And they give the battle, and battle's going to get the first down to about the six yard line. You got to like the Oregon State offensive line on this drive. They're getting about a two yard push off the ball. Coming into the season, I'm talking to Dennis Erickson. And this big crowd reacts on the first down, first and goal for the Beavers. But Dennis Erickson said, My offensive line is the strength of this unit. And if you have a good group up front, you got a lot to work with to bring skill athletes into the picture like Jonathan Smith and this wide receiver for. You can see uh, how much damage this offense has done and can do. Simonton back in the ball game now. First down at the six yard line. Simonton tries to get outside. Got to about the four. Paul Nelson with a fingertip tackle. And just another of the many freshmen that Bob Toledo has had to play just by the attrition caused by injuries. And Nelson did a nice job of getting in, coming in off the edge and making a shoestring tackle there. And Bob Toledo, concerned once again, has been a rocky road the last three weeks in the Pac-10 play for the Bruins. And Bob just does not have the full deck here. Slot this time, give it to Simon and again, touchdown Beavers, very effective first drive. A week ago, Oregon State had trouble finishing off drives, not on this drive. They open up very impressive mix of run and pass. And blocking was solid up front. Simonton walks into the end zone. Keith the DeMonico, the center, helped him out. Trying to point Seska, who has been perfect this year and continues so. Now 22 up 22. And the Beavers take it right down and score. They lead 7 to nothing. We'll be back. We welcome you back. Oregon State uses five minutes and three seconds, takes it 80 yards. Simonton, the bulk of the work, 51 total yards, 39 receiving, and another 12 rushing, including the five-yard touchdown right here. A great work by Sykes, D. Domenico, Cook, and White. Let's watch all four of them right here. One, two, three, four. That's called jersey on jersey, beautifully blocked, and Simonton, that's a walk in the park. He wasn't even touched. So Seska to kick it off for Oregon State. A very impressive drive and some adjustments necessary as you look at the Buick scoring drive. This is going to be Houston at the 10-yard line. Houston got a little gap at the 30, at the 35, still at his feet 40, and finally dragged down just short of the 45-yard line. Excellent return. Corey Paz. Just a freshman learning on the job. He's had one great game, then he's had not such a great game. Then another great game, then not such a great game. It's been that kind of year for the first-year freshman. Kind of the story of the Pac-10 Conference in general. Brian Pollock has uh, been a guy who has not been able to practice very much. He's got bad knees, he's got bad Achilles, and he's out here grinding it out. Keith Brown, of course, gets the start at tailback ahead of Deshaun Foster, who did not even make the trip because Bob Polito said, I'm not going to play this guy on AstroTurk. And they give it to Brown on first down, and he stopped immediately. Gain of a yard. And Sean Ball right there to stick it. Defensively, DeLawrence Grant is a JC transfer, but he was here for spring ball, so he's coming along very quickly for the Beavers. Jonathan Jackson in the middle. You'll hear his name called quite a lot. Very active linebacker, good speed, and a hitter. And Dennis Weathersby back now 
and this is a guy that everybody talks about. He's been banged up most of the year, now 100%. And everybody says this guy is going to be a special, special player in the words of Coach Dennis Erickson. Again, it's Brown on the carry, and Talatayina sticks him after a gain of a yard. It'll be third and eight. And we talked about Deshaun Foster not making the trip and Bob Toledo not wanting to play him on the AstroTurf. That's because of the high ankle sprain suffered against Stanford. And you know, Brown very capable. Jermaine Lewis also a very good tailback. But when you're talking about Deshaun Foster, that's one of the best four or five running backs in the nation. Bruins really missing out in the tailback department. Three wide outs in the ball game now for UCLA. They go out of the shotgun, cross back to pass. Now he has to step up. He'll run and he'll be stopped. A sack on the play, and the Bruins will have to give it up three and out. Darnell Robinson made the stop. Credit the secondary with good coverage. Let's go down to the sideline now. Larry Burnett with an update. Larry? Well, guys, a lot of people have been talking about the status of Danny Farmer. He came in today, got his injured ankle taped, and then he took off. They couldn't find him. He showed up here a while ago. They decided they're going to play him early in the game, see how that ankle holds up. So far, he hasn't been in. Now, Bob Toledo told us yesterday that he expects, he diagrams 15 plays, and he expects to have Farmer in the game for about three of them. So maybe about 20% is what we'll see Farmer today. That's a big loss. This punt is going to ride deep into the end zone and out of the end zone. And Oregon State will start at the 20-yard line. 57-yard punt. Good distance on the punt, but perhaps a little bit too much. A yeah, big factor with Danny Farmer, along with that ankle injury that hampered him over the first month, is a new injury, a groin injury for Danny. And can we talk about this offense? And you look at Deshaun Foster, Freddie Mitchell, the wide receiver, and also Danny Farmer. You're talking about three guys that are bona fide first round draft pick kind of athletes. And right now, Farmer, his status is doubtful. And see, he's coming up on J.J. Stokes and Kevin Jordan there, the all-time reception leaders. But all three of those kids, great athletes. Mitchell, the only one at full speed. Four wide outs and a single setback for the Beavers as they start at the 20 yard line. Yeah, it's still looking for something to stop him here. Here's a little hitch this time, which is a big staple in the Oregon State offense. Joe Jones has to catch, but gets absolutely nothing. Might have lost the ball. In Oregon State, they do a nifty job of just rising up after the snap. Jonathan Smith will get it out on those bubble screens to the wide receivers, try to take advantage of some of the size outside wide receiver blocking. But Paul Nelson coming up from his cornerback position, making a nice, solid tackle. We gave a yard. It'll be second and nine. Same offensive set. Double slot. Hey, folks. Smith the throw. He does almost get a second. Threw the ball behind Prescott. He never looked for the ball. And Stracula, Stracula rather, almost had to pit. That was a nice break on the ball by Stracula. Play action fake. Three-step drop. Jonathan Smith doesn't account for the free safety. That's a poor throw. Might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Number 37 almost had himself an interception on that play. I think the ball was touched at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third down and nine. He was finding themselves in a lot of third and longs. They've converted them thus far. Smith, he dropped this time. There's a screen, and it's batted away. Good play that time by Kenyon Coleman. Very active defensive end. Kenyon Coleman, well documented as a freshman and a sophomore, a lot of untapped potential, but he had kind of a rebirth in the offseason. Beavers trying to set up the screen out to the right side, and Kenyon Coleman has become a force. Had a great fall camp, maximum effort on every play. Coaching staff and also Kenyon talked about his first two years. He used to take plays off, not anymore. So Fessler will kick it away to Ryan Rock. Really should get pretty good field position. Twisting kick. Rock at the 39-yard line. Stutter steps. Comes up the middle. Stays on his feet across midfield into Beaver territory at the 48-yard line. 40-yard punt. And a 13-yard return for Rock. And it wasn't easy. We'll jump away. 7-0 ball game. Oregon State over UCLA. We'll be back. So... Welcome back, Oregon State, 7-0 lead, but the Bruins off a 13-yard punt return by Ryan Rock will have it in good field position in Oregon State territory at the 48-yard line as Corey Foss brings his team 
to the line of scrimmage with a single setback, two wide outs, and two tight ends. This might be checking off here. Give the ground, trying to get outside. Gets a little room and picks up about seven. It's about the 40-yard line. Might have gained as many as eight yards. We're showing some of the we take a look at some of the rough games that Cade McNown had back in 1995. Now, of course, Cade was a true freshman in 95. Corey Paws, a redshirt freshman, but uh, you know, both players have had some good numbers in games, and uh, you never know, but uh, Cade McNown, one of the best the five or ten college quarterbacks that ever play the game looking back on his career. Give this time to Brown straight ahead. He is stopped. Right at the line of scrimmage, Aaron Wells just stood him up. You know, getting back to Corey Paws, he has the tools. There, there's a reason why UCLA has decided on this redshirt freshman. He's got a big arm. You know, he had some problems with the ribs earlier in the year. Missed a start. And, uh, Trying to fill the shoes of number 18, a very tall order. It's going to take some time. So it'll be third down and short, about a yard and a half for the first down. They're going to power eye this time. Give it to Brown, and Brown will have the first down. Not by much, a little flag comes in. James Allen made the stop, and now let's see about the flag. I think this is going to go against UCLA, and it is a hole. Yeah, it looked like the hole came on the right side. First penalty of this football game. Talk about big penalties. UCLA came into this game. Bob Toledo talking about we need to get a running game going. We need to take some pressure off of pause. And the way you take pressure off a young quarterback is you generate a running game. You pass the ball on obvious running downs, first and second down. You play action pass some. And hopefully you get some plays outside. But now UCLA facing a third and long. And go out the shotgun. Pause this time rolls to his left. Now he throws, and it is almost intercepted, knocked away by Dennis Weathersby. And I'll tell you, the folks in these parts just love Dennis Weathersby. And he's a big guy. I think he's the cornerback size of the future. And maybe of the present. You know, as a red shirt freshman, and right here, Kirill Corey Potts is going to get this ball up late. Shotgun, planned half roll. And you make a few more of those throws, it's going to go the other way for six. So the Bruins, once again, will have to punt it away. The first one went 57 yards well into the end zone. Trying to kick this one away from who comes out, I'm quite sure. High snap, pulled down. Angled away toward the corner. And it's going to go out of bounds somewhere around the 20-yard line. And actually, not even. It's going to be still marching at the 25-yard line, so not... A very good punt that time for the UCLA Bruins. A 25-yard punt. Well, so far, the offensive hero, Ken Simonton. Now throwing back on the screen. Well set up down the left sideline. You get a look at the elusiveness, the reverse move. Holds on to the football. Nice third down play. Simonton once again. And then the blast up the middle, touchdown. First down, Beavers gave to Simonton again. A little gap up the middle, and he gets there in a hurry, didn't he? Well, he hits the hole so quickly, and you talk to the Oregon State offensive coaching staff, they say he loves to run in between the tackles. And you look at his stature, he's only about 5, 780 pounds. Leading the Pac-10 by a ways. Talk about the Pac-10 being down. A little bit. category, yeah. Pac-10 being down, but look at those three guys. Those are three pretty darn good running backs. Big numbers. We talked about Simonson being in the top five in the country. Second down, four now for the beat. Get to Simonson again. He's got a first down across the 35-yard line. Well, they talk about north and south runners, David. Ken Simonson is certainly that. Well, and when you have a spread offense and you get five, six defensive backs in the game, 
you're working against five, six men in the box, and it really helps you to get north and south quickly. Simonton decisive. Manning coming up, trying to make the tackle on the outside, but um, impressive career rushing yards for Ken Simonton. Rough game a week ago, but he's come out firing in the first quarter. He's the real deal. Play fake. Smith going deep. Got a man. Who comes out is there? And Smith missed it. And that will not happen often. Smith, a very accurate passer. He's actually missed two touchdowns so far today. When you're watching Jonathan Smith with the naked eye, he's a very good quarterback in the short intermediate ranges, but I've seen him over the last couple of weeks miss some wide open receivers deep. No pressure from UCLA up the gut there, and Smith forced to unload a little early. Tony White, who's outside linebacking position. Go to the second and ten. Oregon State has not gone vertically too many times, but they did against Stanford. And so if you squat on us, you take a little of the underneath stuff, we'll throw it long. Simonton, in the meantime, picks up about eight. And when you can run the football like that, boy, it sure makes this offense effective. Well, it does make this offense effective, Barry. And, you know, once again, Erickson, a master at mixing run and pass. And when you have a defense guessing on second and ten, and you're able to run the football effectively, that does not bode well for a defense. So it's third down, we'll call it three, and flags fall, and that may be too much time. Before the snap, ball start. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still third down. Now it's a ball start right as the clock ticked down. Feeder's gotten taller in the last couple of years. Did you notice that? Feeding them. Well. <laughs> but you know, we, we come into this game in Oregon State talking about securing the football, handling it well on offense with the skill position players. They've done a pretty good job here in the first quarter. Third down now. And eight. Smith straight back, steps up, throws underneath, ball is caught nicely this time by Prokots, and he's at the 40 to 35 of UCLA. Lavelle Houston makes the stop, but a big third down play. Well, Lavelle Houston makes a stop, but Joe Hunter is matched up man-to-man -man on Prokots. This is a JC transfer with one year to play at Oregon State, one to play one. And he is sneaky quick for a big wide receiver. Bobbling catch, nice job to hold on there. Originally signed with USC, Barry. Yeah, he's a guy who's had a circuitous route right. to Corvallis. Not that there's any other route to Corvallis, mind you. But his has been particularly circuitous. Yeah, the, the, the great circle route. Raised actually in Richmond, California. Ball, illegal substitution on the offense. That five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. A new rule in the NCAA this year, and, and Erickson's looking on. You can't break the huddle with more than 11 players. But uh, Erickson giving the officials an earful right there. But getting back to Percoats, Barry, he signed with USC five years ago and then didn't have the academic rating to actually attend school. So he's been to three JCs along the way before signing at Oregon State. The top receiver for the Beavers this year. Been through a lot of hardships. Dad wound up in jail. Lost his girlfriend and went into an accident. Simon from gets the call and he got some of it back to about the 32-yard line. He got about six. Tony White makes the stop. Right off the... Right off the bat, Oregon State giving UCLA a good dose of inside running. And this front five for Oregon State working very well up front. You know, they're very well coordinated. And you talk about Oregon State and, and, and having no injury problems over the year. That's been a key factor. All five offensive linemen have been able to go for the duration. So it'll be second down and call it seven. Close to eight. Smith throws this time. Caught by Prescott. Prescott shakes one tackler and dives ahead for a first down. Great effort that time by Robert Prescott. Just slipped out of the grasp of Lavelle Houston. Prescott.
got another wide receiver that's doing a great complimentary job with her coach. And that was a pretty impressive job by Jonathan Smith to get that pass off. Pressure coming off the edge. Bruins brought a blitz on that last play. Ricky Manning corner blitz, but they did not do a very good job of disguising it. Jonathan Smith picked it up early. Trips left this time. On first down at the 23-yard line. Battle is the running back. Throw caught by Tompkins. Touchdown, Oregon State. Just like that. And an excellent ball thrown by Smith. State taking advantage of the freshman Manning. And Smith five step drop. Tompkins working against Ricky Manning and Manning victimized on this particular drive and certainly that play. I mean that's too easy just a straight fade route two receiver route up the left side pitch and catch between quarterback and receiver. And again they picked the blitz up battle picked up the blitzer and Oregon State has been able to do that. We got a flag on the extra point here. Smith now 8 of 13, 126 yards. And we haven't played a quarter. And I think this is going to go against Oregon State. And it'll make it a little bit more testing. Ball start. Offense. Five yards. Penalty. Replay the try. Turns it into one of those 18-yard extra points. But Oregon State plenty to be happy about this crowd. Fired up in Corvallis. And UCLA bringing some pressure early, and they're paying for it. Barry. Yeah, they are. So a 25-yard extra point is on its way, and routinely good. So Seska keeps his perfect record intact. 23 of 23. It's a 14 to nothing Beavers lead. Bad. Well, it's all going the right way for the Beavers today. Oregon State with 166 yards of offense to only six for UCLA. A complete reversal to the last time that we were up here when Washington just blew away the Beavers. Let's look. Yeah, look at the two wide receiver route there. And actually, both wide receivers get too close together. Tompkins does a great job on the outside, but Hushmanzada wanders out, almost breaks up the continuity of the route, but still a great throw from Jonathan Smith and not a great job by Ricky Manning on the outside, man-to-man. -man. The scoreboard shows 75-yard drive, eight plays, Tompkins, the touchdown pass, 23 yards from Smith. This is Houston on the return, spun around right at the 20-yard line and dropped. Dropped by Jake Cookus. So the Bruins will start just across their own 20-yard line, and there's the numbers we just spoke of. Not real encouraging for UCLA players and fans, but you know, Corey Paz coming into this football game without Danny Farmer on the outside and now down 14 points. Coaches want to take the game off his shoulders. They can't do that any longer. It's it's on his shoulders now. Jermaine Lewis will be the tailback the throw on first down does for the tight end and it is dropped. Kushan just couldn't hang on. Right now we go to the sidelines and Larry Burnett. Larry, what's up? Well, Barry, uh, it was Ricky Manning who got beat on that touchdown pass and the secondary's had its problems this year. He may have even more. Before that set of downs, he was already been worked on twice this afternoon by the trainer for stiffness in his back. Whether that had anything to do with the touchdown, I don't know. Well, they are really thin at that position as it is. Second down and ten. Two tight ends, two wide out, single setback loose. This is Lewis trying to get outside. Got a little gap and picked up about five across the 25. Jonathan Jackson, the middle backer on the stop. On the first down play, Creshawn with the drop. UCLA usually very deep at the tight end position. A couple tight ends didn't make the trip for the quarterback, Corey Paz. Mike Seidman, Brian Fletcher, not able to play today. And not that full complement of tight ends. Bob Toledo and Al Borges don't get to use all the formations they like to go to. Third down situation once again here. Third down and not an easy one. Third and we'll call it six. Pause the long count. Now he has to step up. He's in trouble. Jackson after him. Pause head down. Got the first down. Good effort by the freshman.
not only a good effort, but he shows me a little courage here. He's going to lower the helmet first, step into his left, showing a little bit of mobility in the pocket, something that uh, Cade McNown was able to do over the course of four years, but a nice job by Paws lowering his helmet on James Allen and Terrence Carroll, the free safety. Looks like Sean Ball might have been uh, victim of a takedown right there. Looks like James Gezzi. Also got some help from the official on that play, getting another block. Paws throwing on first down, in and out of the hands that time of Freddie Mitchell, and a flag is going to come down, and that's going to go against the Beavers. That was very close. And Weathersby arriving on the scene just to count too early, and he's going to get hit here with a pass interference call. Freddie Mitchell going to run a simple curl route, trying to use some of his size and his physicality, and it's a pretty uh, tight coverage right there. Weathersby might have been there a beat too early, but uh, pretty solid coverage on the outside for a freshman. And Barry, it's going to be important for UCLA to get some wide receivers deep because it's very apparent early in this football game, the secondary players for Oregon State are sitting down on these routes, and they're not respecting the speed on the outside. That moves the chains. Ball at the 39 yard line. Falls on first down, just wrecked. Lost the football. UCLA falls on it. James Allen blew in untouched. Now you turn defenders loose on your quarterback like this many times, and you're going to be going to the second stringer. I mean, Allen coming on a blitz. He's not picked up. And it looks like pause. He's hurt. He's down on one knee. Up. Down on one knee at the 30-yard line. And this is something that uh, absolutely comes as a scare card for Bobby Toledo because we asked him about what happens if Paws goes down, and he said, boy, we hold our breaths. And I say that with due respect to Scott McEwen. And Paws a little bit upset. From time to time, a quarterback will get upset with his offensive line, and I can tell number 10 is right there. I mean, occasionally you'll turn a secondary player loose, but not an outside linebacker play action they abort the fake and Allen and that's a nice hit by Allen when you get a free shot on a quarterback like that you use the helmet all these Oregon State players are aware of the rib problems that Paws has had and with that we come to the end of the first quarter and it was a disaster for UCLA they had 10 plays in the first quarter and at 10 total yards 166 for Oregon State and a 14 to nothing lead I guess. 14 to nothing ball game, 12-33 remaining second quarter. Let's take a look at our Eve Follett lineman profile. And we profile today Kenyon Coleman. Coleman at 6'6", 278 is a junior. You can see seven tackles for a loss this year. He's already knocked the ball down today. Very active, and he's a guy with a big load on his shoulders today as the UCLA defense really trying to do some business because the offense has it. Smith steps up, now he'll run. Got a little room, 40, 35. The first step to the 30, dives. Did he get the first down? Beavers think so. It'll depend on the spot. 16 yards. Might have left himself just a tad short. That's a huge play for the Beavers offensively. Even if he didn't pick up the first down, this is four down status right here. And you know, early in the season, as we take a look at our ISO camera here, Jonathan Smith looking down the field. Hushman Zada covered well. What do you do as a quarterback? Pull it down, run the quarterback draw. And getting back to that point very early in the season. Look at the measurement. Jonathan Smith was not called upon to run the ball very much. This could be a first down for Oregon State. Well, I think Smith measured that baby. He didn't make it by more than an inch. Yeah, but, you know, we, talk, we talked to De Dennis Erickson a couple weeks ago, and he said, uh, you know, Jonathan Smith's the type of guy that'll move around, he'll shift in the pocket, but he's not going to pull the ball down much and run. But last week, he was a top rusher for the Beavers against Stanford down on the farm, and he's already had a couple nice runs in the first half of this ball. Game. So a first down on another third and one, which has really plagued Oregon State this year. Not so today. Ball at the 29-yard line of the Bruins. Beavers already lead 14 to nothing. Give the battle and battle battles to about the 26. Simonton has not been in the ball game for a while, and I wonder if perhaps there might be a problem with him. He is, I believe, standing on the sideline. It looked to me like that thumb was starting to bother him a little bit. And he's been playing with that 
dislocated thumb since the USC game. Heard it in the first quarter down in Los Angeles at the Coliseum. Simon then is sitting on the bench. Now, whether or not that means he's hurt, he's being tended to, so I think there must be some problem. Larry Burnett will hustle over there and find out for us, and we'll let you know. Second down, seven. Smith, short drop, slant. Unable to hold on that time was Jones. Ball was thrown a little low and a little behind him. It would have been a very difficult catch. Yeah, they were looking inside the slot man on the quick slant, and let's take a look at the exchange here. Center quarterback exchange, a double clutch by Jonathan Smith. That was a pretty accurate ball right there. Nice coverage by Lavelle Houston getting his first start at three safety. Nice break on the ball there by number 21. And there is Simonton, and uh, he does appear to be getting some attention. Those are his numbers so far. Beavers so far just getting it done on third down. They're five of six, and they haven't been easy third downs, and neither is this one, third and seven. And Smith checking off. And we got flags, whistles, all kinds of stuff, and Smith might have waited a beat too long. Delay a game, offense. Five yards to the previous spot, still third down. And that's one of the mistakes as a sophomore quarterback. You've been in this program now for a couple years. And you always want to find that 25-second clock when you break the huddle, especially when you have a third and six, third and seven. Before all of a sudden, you turn it into a third and 12. You're going to be looking at those third and long situations. That's a mistake from a relatively experienced quarterback. So it makes it even tough with third and 12 now. Straight back pass, Blitz comes, Smith steps up, he could have run, instead he could have got a wide open man. That's Prescott trying to get down inside the five yard line, gets it to the seven, and another third and long conversion. A gain of 25 on third and 12. Well, Jonathan Smith had two options on this play, and watch Prescott come across and help. Number 21, Lavelle Houston, he gives up on the play right there. And if Lavelle Houston goes ahead and just keeps flowing across the field, he has a chance to pick that ball off. Two, two options for Smith. Smith could have held on to that football and run for the first down there. And I think that's what Houston was thinking. <laughs> so first and goal again for the Beavers. Give the battle on a slant. Battle gets to about the five yard line. That's it. This has really been the year in a capsule for the UCLA defense. Barry, they've had a lot of third and long Robert situations, Thomas. but complete breakdowns. And a lot of them have come in the secondary, forced to play some young players like Lavelle Houston, but the Bruins have played solid defense for three or four plays and then give up a big third and long or a big play on the outside for a touchdown. And Bruins have to shore that up. Yeah, this is just, it's a young team, it's a thin team. It's a team that's going to get better. There's no question about it. Play fake Smith to throw. Looks the end zone. Got Mauer. Two top. Let's go to Larry Burnett now. Try to get a st the story on Ken Simonton. Larry, what's up? Well, the problem is a rib problem. And Barney Graff, the Oregon State trainer, says they're treating it like a bruise right now. And they will check him out more thoroughly at halftime. All right, thanks very much, Larry. So that was, uh, I would expect then we will not see Ken Simon at least for the remainder of the half, which is still more, almost 10 minutes away. And it does take a real weapon, needless to say, away. Now here's the empty backfield. The Beavers have not shown this yet today. Third and goal from the five-yard line. Smith, and again, he took too much time. And the Bruins were coming. That's the first time that the Bruins have shown this, David. Well, look at Oregon State. You look at five wide Play receivers. Game, game. You talk okay. about spreading things out. And that's why they call it the spread defense. And you also get a look there at the result that it has on the UCLA defense. Not many players inside to defense the run against the Beavers. Well, again, penalties biting the Beavers. That's their sixth for 42 yards, and that's been a season-long problem for that man. 
Dennis Erickson visibly upset because he knows right here he has a chance to throw the first of a couple knockout punches that could be delivered. And here's a draw for Smith. Smith steps outside and dives into the end zone for a touchdown. Yet another third down and long situation. And again, the Beavers convert. play calling by Oregon State and it's simply counting it's counting the number of defenders up on the ball the quarterback draw from Smith and a bad snap but nonetheless good job by the holder to get it down and Seska puts it through and remains perfect for the year and the Beavers lead the Bruins 21 to nothing Well, a smile on the face of Dennis Erickson, his quarterback, Jonathan Smith, executing this offense brilliantly, David. Yeah, and they catch the Bruins again on a blitz right here. Robert Thomas and watch Jonathan Smith just slip right up inside. Five blockers for five defenders. Jersey on jersey once again. And that is just the perfect play call for the defense that showed from the Bruins. And let's credit... Uh, Jonathan Smith, too, with the setting that block. He needed one block, and he got it. I think it was Gerald Jones who gave it to him. He came right around that block and took it into the end zone. There'll be no return of this kick as Houston downs it. And this is a little confrontation on the field. A little rocking and rolling going on up in the stands. And, I mean, that's the quandary, Barry, that this Oregon State offense puts you in. And as a defense... And a defensive coordinator, Bob Field, said, hey, we're not going to let Jonathan Smith sit back, count the house, play his own defense get him, against him, and let him pick us apart. He's too accurate. Well, in the first half of this football game, UCLA's used pressure, but they haven't got there. They haven't been there to make the plays, and it has cost UCLA. Corey Paul is back in the ballgame at quarterback, and the this time is... To Lewis, who remains uh, the tailback. We have not seen Keith Brown, incidentally, since the first series either. Lewis has been back in there. Lewis got good yardage on first down. He picked up about six. Speaking of good yardage, how about the work by the big boys up front for Oregon State? I'll tell you, I, I like this offense that Dennis Erickson is running here a lot. It, it's tough to defend. Well, and to run this offense, you've got to have the players. And as the recruiting continues in Corvallis, the credibility that Erickson brings to this program, it's going to get nothing but better. There's a give this time to Brown back in the ball game now, and he has popped out of bounds and popped a little late. No flag, though. It'll be a first down for UCLA. Calvin Carlisle was the popper. Yeah, and Calvin did a little barking after the play was over. You got to take a look around and see that no flags are flying before you do that because he hits Brown a little bit late. And you look at the pull right there. Big Blake Worley, the freshman redshirt, and that shot came close to being out of bounds. In fact, uh, Mr. Carlisle lucky not to pick up the 15-yard uh, run. Let's give this time a fullback price, and the price was stopped for a loss. Or at the very most for the line of scrimmage. UCLA entering this football game. Bob Toledo said on my wish list number one, I would hope we could get a running game going. And I would hope that we could kind of take some pressure off the young quarterback. Not a lot of yardage on first down in the running game, though. That'll be second down and ten. Five short drop. Throws batted right back up. And it was Ladaris Jackson who batted it back. Interesting story on these defensive ends for Oregon State. Ladaris Jackson at the top of your screen. Well, we've talked to three or four defensive coordinators in the Pac-10 the last few weeks, and they say that this guy is an athlete. And he's got a guy by the name of DeLawrence Grant playing opposite him on the other side. And they can create some problems for quarterbacks. Pause looks a little bit tentative in the pocket so far. Well, that's what Bob Toledo was saying is one of the issues with him. He unloads the ball a little bit quickly. And that's 
just credit that to redshirt freshman. Here he's going to roll away and look for help. Now he throws, and a comebacker. It's caught this time by Krishan, the tight end, and that's a big UCLA first down to the 44-yard line. 18-yard gain and the first completion for Corey Paws. And Paws on that last play was a little bit more decisive. He stepped up into the pocket, and even more importantly, Creshawn, number 89, did a great job of coming back to the football. I mean, you usually can't on your wide receivers to do that for you, but a big tight end cutting the angle off of the defensive back. Nice play by the tight end. Paws lives this time to... Lewis and Lewis gets to the 35 and the 34 yard line, picked up 10 yards and a first down. Calvin Carlisle and Delorence Grant make the stop, but well executed that time by the Bruins. And not only well executed, but watch Jermaine Lewis here stay tight. Go ahead and roll it. Let's let's watch how tight he stays behind his big offensive line. Look, he grabs a hold of a little jersey there. A nice job by Smith, a five foot seven, 183 pound caboose, following the big man up through the hole. They go out of the shotgun on first down. The ball with the 34 yard line, pause, rolls left, will throw, does so to Mitchell, and Mitchell has his first catch on a gain of eight to the 25 yard line. Oregon State has come out in this football game and they've laid it on the Bruins, both offensively and defensively. Freddie Mitchell talked about him at the top he's got to get involved and it, it, it hasn't been Freddie Mitchell's fault it hasn't been Danny Farmer's fault it hasn't been some of the skill guys it's been the offensive line and Corey Paz young players at key positions and they have not been able to take advantage of the talent outside second down and short Paz give the Lewis first down and more inside the 20 still on his feet inside the 15 inside the 15 Darnell Robinson went for a run, and now a late flag, and there's a lot of whooping going on down there, and I suspect that's what this is all about. Yeah, not a smart play there by Oregon State. It looks like the Beavers are going to be the recipients. Either unsportsmanlike conduct or a personal foul. Well, they had this problem against Stanford last week, and it cost them dearly. Personal fouls have cost this team plenty. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct on a defense. Half the distance for goal from the end of the run. First down. That will make him gnash his gums, let alone his teeth. Yeah, it's making his hair stand up a little bit right there. Erickson is not. He's had a lot to be happy about here in the first half. The penalty department is not something that's pleasing Erickson. It might be. No, I don't think that. I don't think it was a late hit there. I think it was some some talking going on after the football play. I agree with you. First and goal, and they give to Lewis, and Lewis is stopped and then spins and gets back to the five-yard line. Oh, yeah. Darnell Robinson, the first man, and Robinson, the first man, and then Lewis got a little bit more after that initial hit by Robinson. You know, Oregon oh, State a week ago against Stanford, they played the Cardinal toe-to-toe. -to -toe. In fact, they played them more, to, more than toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oregon State had a great opportunity to win that football game. Four trips inside the 10-yard line and only three points to show for those four trips. They actually took the lead with about six minutes to go on the 69-yard touchdown pass between Smith and Roddy Tompkins. Well, there was, the coaches were saying if it hadn't been for four plays, they'd have shut out Stanford. Pause, play fake, looks to the end zone, got a man out there, touchdown, Creshaw! Corey Paz leading his team on a drive, and suddenly things look respectable for the UCLA Bruins. And Corey Paz looked very rough early in this football game. He looked a little tentative. He was not sure of himself in the pocket, and granted, he was not getting good protection, but he settled down on that last drive, and he relaxed a little bit. He wasn't fighting the ball on his delivery. Chris UCLA needed that drive to get back in this football game. It was starting to really get away from him. Griffith to try for pointers. That was good, and it is a 21-7 ball game now as UCLA, on a very impressive drive, cuts the Beavers' lead to 14. And we welcome you back to Corvallis, Oregon. Beautiful fall day. It's just, wow. this is great college football weather conditions. This is perfect. We had a beautiful day two weeks ago, the Washington-Oregon State game, and we caught another one today. Deep kids, Prescott at the one yard line. Gets back to 15, got a gap, look out, 20-25 at the 30, tries to cut it across the field. 
Sullivan does. Now he's coming back the other way. It could be a foot race, and he's caught from behind in midfield. What a run by Prescott. Cody Joyce made the stop from behind. Here's Prescott. Yeah, this is just a, a real nice feel for the seam and a couple nice cutbacks. That's vision. The little shake there. And then he reverses field, and if there isn't some speed coming from behind, he's going to go a long ways. Let's look at the touchdown here. It's a crossing route between tight ends, and this is Creshawn. He's going to slip underneath. And crossing routes, you have a tendency to lose those linebackers inside. Creshawn comes open, and a nice job by the young quarterback, Paws, of putting a little air under that ball. When you have someone wide open in the end zone, put a little air under it and make sure you don't overshoot him. And Bruins getting back in this football game, at least cutting it to a two-touchdown lead, and they needed to do that, Barry. And that is the uh, first score for the UCLA Bruins since the third quarter of the game against Oregon. Stanford, of course, or California, rather, shut them, all, shut them out last week, and we played uh, a quarter and a half, more than a quarter and a half, Barry quarter and two-thirds here today. So the Bruins back on the board. Whitfield, the injured player, seems to be okay. Let's see if we can see what happened. There he is. Oh, and he gets hit by his own man down low. And not a very easy week. Center of the screen, number six. And he gets cut low. And looks like E. Witt's going to be okay. Not an easy week for Eric Whitfield. He started three in a row at safety. And this week they decided to go with Lavelle Houston. So the 50-yard kickoff return puts the Beavers right back in business at midfield. Give the battle. A sign from still on the ball. The battle shakes a tackle. He's on his way. 30. 20, 10, touchdown Beavers, one play. They love it in the coach's booth and they love it here at Reeser Stadium. Well, they should love it because that was a perfectly executed zone play to the outside. And battle was very decisive. took a circuitous route to the University of Oregon. He's from Royal Palm Beach, Florida. He went to a junior college called Jones Community College. And I have to tell you, that's one I have not heard of. Graduated from high school back in 1995. Didn't play football for one year. And a nice look from the end zone right here. Just a simple handoff, zone play, zone blocking. And sometimes on that zone play, the crease opens up outside. Battle with the speed to get to the corner. Then it's nothing but north-south. Thomas, Manning chasing from behind. They're not going to catch him. Battle has done a tremendous job stepping in for Simonton. And one more angle. I mean, the one thing you can't teach to a football player is speed, and Battle showed vision, then speed, to break into the clear. Simonton, incidentally, has gone to the locker room to have his injured ribs checked on, but uh, these Beavers have not looked back, have they? No, they haven't, and there is nothing more deflating for a football team. Look at the disparity in yardage. There's nothing more deflating for a football team than to, to get back in a football game, cut the lead to two touchdowns, and then immediately give up a touchdown coming back the other way. Well, UCLA, in its last nine games, has given up an average of 475 yards per game. And so far, today, 265. We still have 531 remaining in the half. Side-winding kick handled by Houston at about the seven yard line. And he is at the 23. It was Jermaine Lewis on the return and not Houston. And he may not get up for a while after that hit. And more flags. Flags into the out at about the 36-yard line. Boy, he got wrecked. Yeah, he got he got hit. And this is Cold Stone side shot right there. Boy, he lost the football too. Look at that. He's just laying on top of the football. I don't think the Beavers coverage team noticed that football because that ball, Houston did. Personal foul on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. 
UCLA first down. Well, that's insult to injury, literally insult to injury. <laughs> a 15-yard personal foul penalty while they tend to Lewis. 28 to 7, Beavers. 524 remaining here in the first half, and the Beavers answer the Bruins score. Bruins start deep in their own territory at the 12-yard line. Boy pies the quarterback. Brown now the tailback. It's Brown. And he didn't get much. About two. Let's take one more look at the hit. And Lewis hits it pretty hard himself, and boom. What a shot. Yeah, I, that's not just a shot. That's leading with the helmet into the rib areas. And uh, Lewis not able to hold on to the football. It's Jake Cookus who made the stop. And uh, he's a guy uh, about whom uh, Willie Robinson, the defensive coordinator for Oregon State, eight. spoke in glowing terms. Lewis really had it going at the tailback position for UCLA on that last drive. Play fake this time, calls will throw in second down, has time, steps up, throws, caught this time, and flat is down. And so I think it's coming back. Oh. Pretty good catch that time by Melsby, but it'll be for naught. Ladaris Jackson with a late push. And yeah, sometimes football can be a cruel game because you know, Corey Pod sat in the pocket. Bender come clean from the backside. And he's going to make a beautiful throw here. A nice catch by Melsby. And Paws pays for it with the hit. And even though they hook up on the completion, it's on the holding call. Once again. Holding. Offense. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Still second down. Bob Toledo, a man under siege at yeah. the moment. And, and Bob Toledo wants to take advantage of his good passing plays when he can get them because there haven't been many over the last two or three games. Well, I'll tell you, he's a guy who... Uh, With the exception of the Oregon game, the first two quarters. And they're beating him up in Los Angeles, and I don't think they should be. I mean, he's... A mule ain't going to win a Kentucky Derby, and I'm not saying this is a mule, but it's also not such a turn. Twelts it up here, and incomplete. Weathersby defending... Freddie Mitchell, the intended receiver. And Freddie Mitchell on the outside. There's some bumping going on, some physical play, but when you're down 21 points, you're not going to get the benefit of these calls. A pretty well-thrown ball. And you see Weathersby using that off arm there, that right. Watch the right arm here. You're not going to get that call if you're not playing well on offense. If UCLA's rolling on offense, they're liable to drop a flag in that situation. That's the way football goes. Nice matchup, Weathersby and Mitchell. Two guys are going to make a lot of noise in this conference. Here's a short drop. Paul steps up. Look at DeLorean Grant stuck him from behind. Pause with no place to go. Corey Pause on this play. We get a freeze right here, right about there. If he just takes the ball and gets up and runs, and makes a nice decision to run the football, he picks up the first down, but he waits around. And believe me, there were no defenders out to the right side. If you're facing pressure, don't be afraid to pull the football down. Once again, Oregon State, impressive on defense. And they'll get after the punter, too. Here they're playing run back, and who comes out and might have a chance. And he lets it bounce. Now he picks it up on a high hop, turns around, comes the other way, still on his feet, heads forward, and all of that, I think he picked up maybe a yard. Hushman Zada last week, a big 66-yard return against Stanford down in Palo Alto. And Dennis Erickson looking for that first Pac-10 win. We talked about it at the top. If, Be if the Beavers can come up with a win today, that's a they pick up their first winning record since way back in 1970. Absolutely. I mean, this is a team. I think this is not a bad football team at all. No, See, they have possessions. They've they played pretty well on both sides of the football. It's been the mistakes over the course of the last three games, primarily on offense, that have hurt. Precisely. It is Smith going for it all. Got a man. Tompkins, 20, 10. Touchdown, Beavers. And they are rolling up some big numbers. And you remember very 
when I said he was having a tough time throwing the deep ball over the course of the last few weeks. Now he hit Roddy Tompkins last week against Stanford on a post route, and that's about as, as well as you can throw a post route right there. And once again, Tompkins on the receiving end. I remember the last time we were here, it was 45 to nothing at the half. Washington ahead of Oregon State. Dennis Erickson said it was the most embarrassing hour and a half of his life. Can't help but wonder what Bob Toledo's thinking right now. And this ball comes out quick. Play action fake, five-step drop, finds the receiver and lays it right on the spot. I like that kid's name. Now watch Roddy, he's in the slot. Not bumped, not held up at the line of scrimmage, and most importantly, not accounted for in the secondary. Once again, UCLA burned in the defensive backfield. And yet another big play by a team that just makes big plays. Look at the reaction there from Smith. A lot of enthusiasm. Dennis Erickson, a guy who uh, brought the same philosophy to Oregon State. He had it at Washington State, and why not? It works. Our philosophy is to spread people out, throw the ball first, and uh, when they start spreading out to cover the pass, that opens up our running game, and, and really that's basically what it is. We try to get mismatches, try to get a receiver on a linebacker and one-on-one -on -one coverage, and so it's really all about mismatches. Well... They've had a ton of them so far today. Smith now 10 of 18, 197 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Also run for 10 yards and a score. How about Tompkins? A couple of touches for him. This kid picked up by Houston. And then they said, no, you can't go anywhere. You need touched. He's going to be back at about the five-yard line. Well, actually, I think... Actually, I think that the, uh, the referee signaled there that it was a clean play. It looked like he was... Might have been signaling the ball carrier down, Barry, but... Well, that's what I thought he was. Well, let's watch here. He's going to make... See, he doesn't quite have possession. Then he gets up, and the referee rules that he didn't have possession of the football. But it was a confusing hand signal that we got from the it referee. It sure was. There. It was a shame. There it is. You can see the signal. Well, we could see the signal here in the stadium. You couldn't can see it on your screen at home, but they just showed a replay of the fans here at Research Stadium, and he clearly signaled that the play was dead. And really the telltale sign is whether the whistle blows. Danny Farmer back in the ballgame for the Bruins as they start at the 16-yard line. Good price in Moka. Paws throws underneath for Mitchell, and he's stopped immediately at about the 18 by Isaac White. And we gain of about two. 35 to 7, the Beavers over the Bruins, and there's nothing fluke about it. And you talk about frustration. When you got guys on the outside like Freddie Mitchell from Lakeland, Florida, and Danny Farmer, these are two guys that are definitely headed for first round activity in the NFL draft. But if you don't have the quarterback and offensive line situation to get the ball to them, it can be complete frustration. Farmer just came off and hurt the shoulder. Here's a throw this time to Price, and Price can't hang on, and it's going to be third down. And you know, when you talk about Freddie Mitchell, remember a year ago when that opener, Cade McNown and Ricky Williams for Texas, pitted in a big matchup at the Rose Bowl, the opener? Freddie Mitchell stole the show. He scored on a reverse, on a bomb from Cade McNown, threw a touchdown pass on a bomb himself, and then he broke his leg in that second game against Houston on a big kickoff return. Didn't return until the Rose Bowl game. Still feeling the effects of that injury, but he threw another touchdown pass to Jarrell Price in the Rose Bowl. He's a broken femur. I read just a couple days ago, femur is as hard as concrete. Pause, throws, and it was almost picked. Threw it a little tall for Farmer, the intended receiver. And the Bruins, again, will have to give it up. With 2.41 left, plenty of time for the Oregon State Beavers. Yeah, and that offensive playbook starts to get a bit compressed. It starts shrinking on you when you're down by 28 points. And the Oregon State defenders are starting to load the cannons and bring the pressure both up the middle and off the edge. They're on to do the punting is Milton Pixie. Not a good kick. Short, wobbly, takes a UCLA bounce and goes out of bounds to about the 46-yard line. 
So the Beavers will be in good position again. 35-yard punt. And the clock is no factor at all. And I, I don't believe Dennis Erickson's going to get off the gas here. Well, he, as you mentioned earlier, Barry, he remembers two weeks ago when Rick Neuheisel and the Washington Huskies stopped into town, and it was a 45 to nothing game at halftime. And primarily because Oregon State couldn't handle the football. And we talked about a big storyline today. Oregon State handling the football, not turning it over, not dropping passes. They've been splendid in terms of handling the football. And all. This time, Smith rolls right towards the mile of the tight end. He's got a first down at the 41-yard line. And inflicted a little bit of damage as he finished that run as well. Now we talk about Dennis Erickson's spread offense. Here's the guy who's the general of it, and he's liking it. And why shouldn't he? It's an exciting offense because we spread people out and we try to take some chances, put some matchups one-on-one. It's a really a, an offense that works for individuals. Says, uh, you know, if you beat this guy, we can have a big play. And so we try to put guys in position to make big plays. Uh, Tim Simonson is the guy that uh, we try to put him in the best situation to make a big play. Got a bunch of them so far. That's Eric Mobley running the football, and he picks up nine yards. They've got enough talent outside of Ken Simonson in this football game to still take advantage of matchups. <laughs> And Robert Thomas, uh, who is a dominant player on this UCLA defense. Oregon State coach is talking about him saying he's a downhill player. He really will stick you. And he is down now. And uh, it, things just couldn't get any worse for, for UCLA. And again, talking to, to Bob Toledo the other day, he was talking about the fact that not only has he been so hurt as we look at Thomas again. And the handoff once again on the zone play and Thomas coming in low to tell whether that's a shoulder or but, uh, I'll take a 35 okay. to 7 is the score 159 remaining in the first half and we'll come back to research stadium after this thomas has come off under his own power he appears to be okay easy for me to say second down and short and again this time to mosley again mosley will be close to the first down i think he's going to have it mobley i beg your pardon he does have the first down. Well, it has been a rough go of it for Bob Toledo, not only during the season here in 99, but during the offseason. And, you know, the, the parking scandal at UCLA, the suspensions, so many of his players, those first two games against Boise State and Ohio State at Columbus. And then he has been besieged on both sides of the football by an inordinate number of injuries really starting to show in the depth chart. First down, the ball just beyond the 30, and that time the Bruins get Smith and Howell. Ryan Neese just came in untouched. Take a look at our national car rental game summary, and as you can see, uh, Oregon State 335 yards, and there's still a minute to be played in the first half. Smith a couple of touchdown passes and he took one in himself. Tompkins a couple of touchdown catches and that's all without Ken Simonson who's arguably their best player. Oregon State will uh, take a time out here. You were talking about uh, Bob Toledo and, and what has befallen him since the game in Miami when of course uh, UCLA was rolling and they go into Miami and lose that one. After that game he got in a car wreck in Miami, totaled his car. Then he of course he uh, his son-in-law had, had a brain tumor, something that uh, no small thing that family had to deal with and there was the FBI investigation his daughter got married another daughter had a baby he moved and there was the parking business this has been a guy who has not had the best of it by any stretch of the imagination we talked to him about his his team right now he said we're young we're thin we're sick and we're beat up but other than that we got a pretty darn good football team here well and he and he hasn't been an apologist a lot of those stories and issues have come up come up through you know third party people in the program and and uh, Bob Toledo is the type of guy who says, hey, we're going to strap it on, we're going to go out, we're going to play some football, and we're not going to be conservative. And, uh, you know, looking at that 20-game win streak that they put together before the loss to Miami last year, that doubled the longest winning streak in the history of UCLA football. Before that, 10 games was the longest winning streak in UCLA history. And so, you know, Bob Toledo just a fraction of an inch from stepping into that 
national championship game a year ago. The guy is a heck of a coach, and he's had two good recruiting years, and this is going to be a good football team. Right now, it's not a very good football team. But that's just the bottom line. Here's Smith being chased out of the pocket, throws on a run incomplete. Intended that time from Angero Jones. Tony White putting pressure on again, and that's two times in a row now that the Bruins have got good pressure on Jonathan Smith. But you know what? That's what I like about Jonathan Smith. He has that ability to escape the rush. And, and once again, early in the season, it didn't appear to be one of his strengths, and he has really improved. Well, a reminder, next Saturday, uh, we're going to be uh, in my area, David, USC in California. Stanford, of course, having beaten USC today, and uh, Washington, when, last, when I last looked, was ahead of California. I'm not sure who did ultimately won that game. Washington did win that game, so uh, the Bears are uh, looking at a tough go the rest of the way as well, but Stanford very much on a roll. Straight back, Jonathan Smith. He dropped throws. Got a man caught this time by Pocotes, and another first down on a long yardage situation. It's been unbelievable. Well, and once again, just a real nice job of execution. But watch the free safety for UCLA. And Strakula's made plays this year. But one thing you can't say about Strakula is that he is one of the classic free safeties in the mold that you've seen at UCLA. I mean, he either got to really clean up the receiver or make a play on the football game. Well, Smith throwing this time. And that time, a little miscommunication between Perkutz and now Flack. Perkutz and Smith uh, did not communicate. I think UCLA is going to get flagged here. Be holding against UCLA. It'll give Oregon State a first down. And the beat goes on. Startling number, Dave. Eight of nine on third down conversions for Oregon State. And we're not talking about third and short. Holding third. defense. Ten yards from previous spot. Automatic first down. I mean, there were at least two third and 17s in this last one, which was third and 22. They've looked at a whole sack full of third and long situations, and that has been the story for UCLA on the season. And UCLA to be successful in this football game. We already talked about it on defense. They had to pressure Jonathan Smith, and they have not gotten to him in the pocket too often. First down and goal at the 10-yard line. Short drop. They float it out for Pocotzi. He's got it. Touchdown, Beavers. And Ricky Manning is learning the lessons of Division I football. Yeah, that's a a baptism by fire. And to get this spade ball off, you need touch, you need good footwork, and you need timing. Jonathan Smith had it all on that play. Sanford puts the 42nd point on the board, and with 35 ticks left in the first half, it is a 42 to 7 Oregon State lead. Now look at the blocking up front. Pressure by Rock off the corner blitz. That's plenty of time. And that's one of the great things about the quick passing game the three step drop, and the ball is out of there in a hurry. And one more look. It's a well thrown ball, and Ricky Manning is learning the hard way. That was a perfectly thrown ball, too. He threw it where only his receiver could catch the football, and he had to go up and get it, and Imani Percoats did. What an advantage to have a player like 88 on the outside. I mean, you got the size, 6'3", 202 pounds, and a flanker that can run, has great hands, and has that kind of size, and the fade route is a nice little weapon to have in the arsenal. Well, where the last time we were here, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Today, for Oregon State, everything that can go right has gone right. Watch the pickup on the blitz right here. We're going to get a running back stepping up and taking on Ryan Rock, and he doesn't give any ground. Houston receives the kickoff at about the two-yard line, starts back, and is hammered at the 12. Terrell Roberts on special teams makes the stop for the Beavers. And that's what Dennis Erickson was talking about coming off the Stanford game. You know, we played real well, but we had individual breakdowns and we weren't converting. We weren't finishing off 
are drives. And if you can finish off drives, you can finish off teams in football games. And, and the Beavers had a chance last week. I mean, just on this last touchdown play, Barry, Antonio Battle, he steps up as a running back. He picks up the blitz. The offensive line did a job. And then the execution between quarterback and wide receiver. Erickson has to be very pleased. And Paz takes a knee, and uh, that's discretion being the better part of Valor. Deep in his own territory, and that will be the last play of the first half. And for that man, a long, long 30 minutes of football. It was all Oregon State, and right now, we'll go down to the field to Larry Burnett. Larry? All right, here with Bob Toledo. Bob, what's it going to take for your team to get back in this game in the second half? I, I don't know. I just, uh, we got to keep it uh, to 0-0 zero, zero the second half just to have some pride. Uh, we can't move the ball on offense. Uh, can't stop them on defense. Uh, we're scrambling right now. It's tough. Thanks for coming by. Insult. That's the score. Also injury for this UCLA Bruins team, too. Let's go back upstairs. Yeah, it's tough. There's no question about it. And uh, this is a football team that is just besieged with injuries. It is thin. It is young. It's in a learning process. And boy, is it learning today. Welcome back to Reason Stadium. We start the fourth quarter of a 42-7 game. Dominance. I think that's probably the word of the day for Oregon State. A great job on defense. A defense for Oregon State set the tone early. And the offense just took over. Great game for Jonathan Smith. The running game's been hitting on all cylinders. What more can you say for Dennis Erickson's football team? As we start the final period, it starts uh, with a UCLA punt. Pixie has probably been uh, the player of the game for UCLA. He's had a couple of huge kicks. Almost had that one blocked. Still drove it out of there pretty well. This is Monjero Jones, the 37-yard line. Stutters finally starts going north and south and gets short of midfield and a flag is down. And the flag is down way back near the punter. I think we're going to get a yet another roughing infraction right up the gut there and that might have been that might have been a hold. I think it was. I think you got to call a hold there before you call. Ten minutes declined. First down, Oregon State. Was a hold and it was declined and Oregon State will take the football as we start the final period. Oregon State led it 42 to 7 at the half and uh, has just kind of gone into cruise control here on the offensive side of things. Defensively though they haven't gotten off again. These are the kinds of games where if you're UCLA and you get into the locker room at halftime and you see the way this game is going with all the injuries and how red hot Oregon State's been playing on offense and defense and you just want to warm up the bus and you want to get out of four valves. Terrence Bryant takes over the quarterback, gives on first down to battle and now battle has his 100 yards and he gets it into UCLA territory at 48. Jonathan Smith on the day, 15 of 34, 261 yards with 238 of them coming in the first half. And uh, that, for all intent, was his day. Very effective. And I'll tell you what, and you mentioned this earlier, Dave, but uh, they don't drop off a whole lot with Terrence Bryant. No, and, and they haven't dropped off a lot with Battle at tailback. We talked about Terrence Bryant. He led that big comeback that we talked about down at the Coliseum, the fourth quarter comeback against the Trojans, and was a starter for the first eight games a year ago for the Beatles. He's going to put it up, and now he'll tuck it away and run with it. He does that extremely well. That's a first down at the 39-yard line. Terrence Bryant, pretty good-sized guy, 6'2", 205. Came up here from City College of San Francisco, played on a very good football team there. Jonathan Smith, he likes to pull the ball down and reposition himself in the pocket. Bryant, he likes to tuck it and get positive yardage. Now, Smith's had a couple big gains over the last two weeks, but uh, Bryant's a type of quarterback you really have to keep an eye on him. He pulls that football down. Bryant play fake this time, rolls the other way, and tosses to his tight end, Benny Johnson. And Johnson got about 
six. Good games if you're an Oregon State Beaver. You come in tomorrow and on Monday, everybody's watching the film. They take a look at the stat sheet. Everybody getting well. A bunch of receptions, yards, sacks, interceptions. Cheery group in Corvallis. Well, now you would think uh, it would be good news for Oregon State that they get to go up and play Washington State, not one of the powerhouses of the Pac-10. But then all you have to do is look at today's scores. And Oregon and Washington State is beating Arizona State right at the moment in Arizona. Let's go down to the sideline right now, Larry Burnett. Larry, what's up? Guys, it's interesting how fortunes change when Dennis Erickson and his his crew got fired from the Seattle Seahawks. Tim Lapano was one of his assistants, and he immediately started to look into the OSU job, which was open. Before he could get things untracked, Dennis Erickson called him and said, listen, I got the job at OSU. Do you want to come be my assistant? Lapano says, does that mean I didn't get the head coaching job? <laughs> They've been friends for a long time. They've been together for a long time. And then a surgeon, of course, says that uh, Lapano's going to have to wait to get the head coaches down here. He doesn't intend to go anywhere. Battle will be short of the first down, I believe. And Lapano, the offensive coordinator, I be more impressed than sitting down and meeting with him. And that's one thing Dennis Erickson has done. He's brought in a very high quality staff behind him. A lot of NFL experience high-powered division 1a experience and it's showing on both sides of the football beavers will go on fourth down and uh, that's to be expected a field goal uh, doesn't do anything for anybody doesn't do a lot for me <laughs> no that's good and Brian gives the battle and i don't think he got it so one small victory for ucla And it will be UCLA ball. So the Bruins will start at the 30-yard line. It's going to be interesting, David, I think, to see if... Uh, Stanford manages to find its way into the top 25. Pac-10 has not had a top 25 team for the last two weeks. Arizona now, uh, you can make a pretty good case for the fact that they may be, uh, if not the best team in the Pac-10, certainly one of the best teams in the Pac-10. Good this time is to the tailback. Ryan Rock playing tailback. Who's he with his? Ball look at Greg Smith, the offensive line coach for Oregon State, and we talked about the staff. They hear people talking about Greg Smith, and there's some reverence going on. I mean, he is one of the old masters, and what a job he has done with this offensive line. And no question this Oregon State team, even with the three losses in a row in three play, they have not had trouble moving the football, and they've done a good job up front with the offensive line. And this is a pretty young team. Senior offensive line, there's a reverse, and it takes a fortuitous bounce into the hands of Freddie Mitchell, and he's forced out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Freddie Mitchell is a big play guy. There's no question about it. Not sure he's exactly 100% after last year's injury. Well, how, about, how about the reverse right here, and watch the athletic ability. I mean, look how he kind of relaxes right there. Ball hops right back up to him. That is God-given talent. And yeah, you talk to Cade McNown, the quarterback from last year. He's not impressed by many people on the football field. He's a pretty confident young man. But he, you know, he talks about Freddie Mitchell. His eyes get big, and rightfully so. Mitchell, just unbelievable football talent. He ran for another couple of years, and that time the receiver just fell down on him. So he's not getting the best of it at all. No, and, and you know, some people might not quite be into this game as much as they were early in the football game with a 42 to 7 lead but if you're McEwen right now your heart's going he's getting the first quality experience on the playing field as a quarterback at this level and for UCLA and believe me he's tuned in and he's given it maximum effort this is where you learn this is where you make your strides not on the practice field but in a game as a quarterback a bit of a drizzle starts to uh, come down here in Corvallis rolls out this time. We have a track, track pass intended for Mitchell who wants a flag. There will be none. 
incomplete. James Allen was defending. And here comes Lewis, just a small tailback trying to take on a big defensive end, and that's number 90, Atkinson. And sometimes in your blocking schemes, you have to put a tailback on a defensive line, a defensive end, not very frequently a tackle, but the size disparity there was considerable. So it's third and 10 for UCLA. McCune steps up, throws in and out of the hands that time of Nelsby. Well, it has been uh, a fall to be sure over the last several months for the UCLA Bruins. It was only, it, it was 10 months ago that the Bruins were 10-0 and and working on that winning streak that you talked about. And since that time, 3-7. and seven. A 20 game winning streak and the, the well-spoken of rift between the offense and defense after the Miami game, it carried into the Rose Bowl and uh, somewhere short of a maximum or actually effective effort in the Rose Bowl against Wisconsin. And they block a kick. It's, it just has been one of those days. Brandon Boyce gets credit for the block. Like I said, Barry, everybody getting into the act. I mean, there's going to be a lot of Oregon State players tonight out on the town being proud to be seen in their Letterman's jackets because everybody's getting involved. Bringing, bringing Corvallis to its knees. <laughs> well, take a time out. 42 to 7, Oregon State. And 26 left in this ball game. Following the block punt by Boyce, Oregon State takes over at the 46-yard line of UCLA. They've been empty here in the second half. Play fake. Bryant now steps up. Now throws and throws it away. Well, it is not. Uh, it has been the easiest victory for Dennis Erickson over a UCLA team, and it was a long time between. This one, David, was not quite so easy. Remember this? No, this was back in 1988. Troy Aikman, a senior, and the Bruins, number one in the country. They're leading by 21 points in this game. Washington State comes back behind Tim Rosenbaugh, and you saw there the final shot into the end zone. In fact, Aikman and UCLA had three shots into the end zone, and Terry Donahue, as always, a gentleman, losing as well as winning, and he's the all-time winningest coach in the history of Pac-10, but a devastating loss for the Bruins. Short of the 40-yard line, he got about six. Look back at that 1988 season, and you know, you talk to Troy Aikman even today, and he says that loss to Coach Erickson, in Washington State, that was the biggest disappointment in my football career. Dennis Erickson was the coach of the year, 1993, and as you saw, a national national coach of the year. It's interesting. Bob Salida was talking yesterday about the fact that uh, Mike Price called him last week. And Mike Price, of course, was uh, the coach of the year in the Pac-10 Conference two years ago, and Bob Toledo was the coach of the year in the Pac-10 Conference last year, and Mike Price called him up and said, what's happened to us? We can't coach anymore. <laughs> you know, Erickson's the, the coach of the year in 88, but you look at Miami right here, and you get a national title in 89, then again in 91. Talk about bringing instant credibility to the Northwest, specifically Oregon State. And, you know, he's one of the head coaches where you walk in on a Friday meeting and, and you meet with Dennis Erickson and you just kind of sit there and you try to be quiet and you try to pick up as much as you can from him to try to pick his brain because he's truly one of the best. I really believe that he's installed an offense here, and it's the same offense he's had. He had it at Washington State, he had it in Miami, but he's installed an offense here wherein you can recruit the kinds of kids to run this offense who want to come up here and play. I mean, what kid who can go catch the football and a kid who can throw the football wouldn't want to play in this offense? Yeah, and you look at those numbers right there. He's not the first coach to bring a throwing game to the Northwest. Dave Craigthorpe uh, came up here to Oregon State. Pettibone, of course, the other side of the of the meter in terms of going with a wishbone, but uh, the name of Erickson and the power behind the name, the credibility, the history of Erickson is going to help so much in recruiting, fundraising, 
facilities have really been stepped up here in Corvallis. Ball start offense. Five yards in the previous spot. Still yeah. second down. Young, energetic, athletic director. Uh, it's all going in the right direction. I'll tell you the other thing about Oregon State is Eddie Payne, who a uh, guy I have great respect for, the basketball coach here at Oregon State, is going to have a pretty darn good team here, too. So, And the women's programs are very good. Women's basketball very solid here. And you look at Oregon State back in the 80s, and they had that streak there where they were the best team in the Pac-10 over five or six years. It's been a little bit longer for the football squad. But Throwing deep this time into traffic, and who got it? Yeah, I think the Bruins got this one. Ricky Manning's not having a little amends. Gets a kick. Boy, was that needed for number nine. And Ricky Manning, he talked about field, the defensive coordinator. He says, competitive the spirit, the ability, and the fire from this young kid, he's going to be a player of the future at UCLA. But you can't have much tougher a first half of play than Ricky Manning in the first half of this football game. Nice to see him continue to compete, come up with an interception. Well, there's a lot of young talent on this team, and especially on the defensive side of the ball. You talk about Manning, Paul Nelson, who is a, a freshman also, and uh, Houston, just a freshman. Joe Hunter plays behind the line rock and has to step in. He's a freshman. The guy that they really think an awful lot of is Marcus Lewis. We haven't called that name too much today, but uh, we will over the next four years. Ryan Neese, the son of Ronnie Lott, is just a sophomore. Robert Thomas, about whom the uh, Oregon State coaches uh, spoke in glowing terms, is just a sophomore. This team is going to be heard from. I, I absolutely am convinced of it. And everybody's focused on Bob Toledo in the 20-game winning streak and the shot to... Uh, Barely missed that national title game a year ago, but he's quietly put together two top five recruiting classes in the last two years. Ryan McCann is an athlete. And this one is complete. Oh, man! Are you kidding me? McCann came in that same rec recruiting class as Corey Paws. And McCann was a pretty highly recruited kid at a Westlake Village, California, at Brewer High School. And uh, Paz was the, the guy from the Midwest. Yeah, good kid, 6'4", pushing 220. Shotting him. Terrence wouldn't say to the coaches or his teammates, but he's with the equipment guys. He said, Yeah, I think that uh, you know, the looseness of the shoes may have created that interception. <laughs> That's right. Blame it on the shoes. Well, you, you, don't, you don't let your teammates or your coaches hear that. But, you know, there are a couple people over there that will listen to you from time to time. Usually the equipment guys. kick on Joe Jones runs up, takes him to 42. Tries to get the outside, can't do it. Nice play defensively by the Jones Bruins that time. As five. quickly under that one was Eric Whitfield. We'll jump away. 42 to 7, Oregon State leading UCLA. 7:30 remaining. There was. It was the score at the half, and it's the score with seven and a half minutes remaining in the final quarter. Oregon State, 42, UCLA, 7. I think it's interesting, David, that remember Larry Burnett talked to Bob Toledo as they were going off the field at the end of the second half, and he said, what can you do? What do you hope for? And Bobby said, a scoreless second half. He's got it. Yeah, that was a bit of sardonic wit from Toledo. I think he was his way of his offensive charge. A little bit of a whipper. Let's go down right now to Larry Burnett on the sideline. Larry, what do you got? Well, guys, Marty Marr is not only a tight end for this Oregon State team, but he's also quite a hunter and quite a cook. As a matter of fact, if you take a look in his freezer, he's got elk, he's got venison, 
He's got beef, he's got pork chops, and he cooks for some of the players when he gets a chance. His favorite dish that he makes, a roast beef sandwich au jus. How about that? That's excellent. That's excellent. I hope he doesn't hunt the, the beef. That's a good... Well, no. Or the pork chops. Well, sure he does. <laughs> or the pork chops, that's right. <laughs> they're very seasonal, aren't they, Larry, as I recall? I think they're out of season here. <laughs> it's such a great way to stay in well with both constituents. The guys, you know, they love it that you're out there hunting, and the girls are just doing a little cooking in the kitchen. So he's got... Uh, Got all his base is covered there. Got an elk in my refrigerator also. Got a Shriner in my refrigerator. There's always, always a chance to have a couple lobby groups after him, you know, on that hunting thing. But. Yeah, that's a good kid out. Go for it all. Got a man out there in and out of the hands of Junior Adams. shot to make a reception there cleanly on the sidelines and he's watching number nine out of one of those eyes. And Bryant finally here getting comfortable, a nice ball, streak route up the sidelines and ooh, and I can see why uh, Junior gave up the rock right there. Nice hit by Manning and, and Manning's made a nice comeback here in the second half. That's where you hit a receiver. The receiver's compromised a little bit on the outside. Here this time, once again, to uh, Hashin Hall. I think Hashin Hall is one of the dormitories here on the OSU campus, isn't it? Antonio Battle. Still a pretty serious look at his face over there. Barry, we're going to have to let you go early. <laughs> That up. <laughs> it's late, and it's a, can I say it? It's a b -b 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 blowout. Straight back to Bryant. In trouble. Hit as he threw, got it away nicely to Adams, and he's got a first out in midfield. for Junior, and how about the work in the pocket? Coleman, and he's going to set down Bryant on his rear end right there. And Coleman, you know, he's been impressive this game. If, if there's one thing you can say about UCLA defensively, a rough play on the outside out of bounds, the UCLA bench, if there's one thing you can say about the UCLA defense, they play pretty well up front over the course of the season. It's the secondary where they really have to look to replace and Bryant this time throws a little hitch to Turner Bird. The UCLA coaches you take a look at the big defensive lineman for Oregon State on the sideline there, but the UCLA coaches, they don't make any bones about it. They say that you look at the film over the course of the 99 season, it's the secondary where we've really been let down. And it's tackling, playing the football in the air, across the board. Second down, about three. This time, Daniel Hall spins off the line. It's going to be about a yard short of the first down. It'll be third and short. Well, Oregon State uh, trying to reverse uh, a trend that has gone on for a long time, and that is get to a bowl game. They need six wins, of course. This would be their fourth still to come. Washington State next week in Pullman. Then they have two home games against California and Arizona, two representative teams, and, of course, the Civil War against Oregon in Eugene this year. And Oregon State has to win that game in Coleman next week, and that's not going to be easy. No, it's not. I mean, the Cal Bears went up there for themselves and had their hats handed to them, 31-7. And as you said, Washington State is beating Arizona State today in Tempe. Price has done a pretty nice job. You talk about a roller coaster ride up in Pullman. Jonathan Smith backing up his pal Terrence Bryant on the field right now. It's towel time. But uh, you know, Price goes to the Rose Bowl a couple years ago. Last year they don't even have one win to show for the 98 season. And this year they've done a pretty good job of turning it around. This time made by Kittner. Kittner on a race to the end zone. He's in. Touchdown, Beavers. What a 
job by Kidney. A nice job by Bryant as well. that Oregon State team has ever scored against the UCLA Bruins. Celebration on the sidelines for Kintner. The home state boy played his high school ball at McNary under a legendary coach in the ranks of Oregon high school football, Tom Smythe. He's another one of those guys like Danny Farmer. You look at him, they say he doesn't have great speed, but I'll tell you what, nobody caught him there. And you say it does have great speed. 49 to 7 with the extra point. We're coming back. 49 to 7, the Oregon State Beavers putting 42 on the board in the first half and not looking back as you look at the National Car Rental Game summary. Six touchdowns the first seven times they had the ball. Battle sitting in for Simons and over 100 yards. And return to the 30-yard line. Three-step drop. And he puts that ball right on the money. Nice move by Kintner to get inside on that slant route. You mentioned he played at McNary. He was a state player of the year a couple years ago in the state of Oregon. Tom Smythe, who himself was an assistant coach here at Oregon State. Look at the reaction for Brian. Maybe the first time Brian's going to touch the game. That was his first rodeo. He's had quite a bit of success here at Oregon State. He's going to take Donald Johnson's net. And the corner of Oregon State's going to be a backer. Just a bad exchange, and that often happens when you've got a person out on his play with one another out there. And that's the case for UCLA now. Call the woman. Falls on the ball. Beavers will have yet another chance. The biggest margin of victory in this series, which has now spanned 50 games, 28 to nothing for Oregon State. That was back in 1948. And right now, of course, uh, they lead it by 42. Next week, we'll be down in Berkeley, Strawberry Canyon, one of the great sites for college football. As USC comes into town, look at its wounds. Trojans have dropped a 21-point lead two weeks in a row to Notre Dame and then today to Stanford. I feeling real good about themselves either after today's loss. And it's also the way to the football game. And the flag comes in late. And we talked about today's game being a bowl elimination game. That might very well be one next week. You're going to see two teams playing their hearts out in that one because uh, seasons are going to be on the line. State's uh, biggest victory in this series, uh, which would be today, 42 points. UCLA did a little bit bigger back in 1954. They beat the Beavers 61 to nothing. Remember that one? That's right. I do remember that one. 
I was in the 40s. Dave. But only in my book. Yes. You know, I'm <laughs> talking about history. But uh, now it's the Aloha and the Oahu Bowl. They play those back-to-back -back bowls. And the, the Pac-10's number four and five teams are playing those two bowl games. The number two team in the Pac-10 will play in the holiday bowl. Number three goes down to El Paso in the Sun Bowl. So, uh, as long as you have five teams with many records, that's going to be well represented. Third down. And you can't even call that running it in because they were just running the football and nothing fancy. Yeah, absolutely not. When you get players into the game that haven't played much during the season, you don't want to put the reins on them. You want them to get out and play, get some experience, show what they can do. And look at Paul. He's talking about a young kid who's fired up. Look at him. <laughs> I mean, they're going to have to restrain him over there. Actually, they're already on. And Scarlett's crack the point is no good. He missed that. So it remains a 55 to 7 ball game. College football has been brought to you today by John Hancock, worldwide Olympic sponsor, insurance for the unexpected, investments for the opportunities. By the all-new 2000 Buick LeSabre, by Buick, re-engineered to be safer than ever. And by eFallet.com. Need college textbooks? Get out of line. Well, there's joy on the Oregon State sidelines. Uh, they have just done absolutely everything right today. Another huge offensive game for them. 61 yards today, and they made the horns in the second half. And that's that guy right there at the park of the Kids' Sonic Brothers, living on at the Presbyterian Hashim Hall. who returns it to about the 27-yard line for UCLA. 2.34 remaining in the game, and I think both sides uh, would just wish this time would tick off quickly. You know, if, uh, if you look at the Bruins finishing up there, Barry, that is not an easy road. I'll say. Yep. Trouble up in Corvallis, 55-7, to and now you get to up against Arizona, Washington, and then we'll see at the Coliseum. That street may be over as the throw. That game, though, throw it all out. Throw it all out. Yeah, that's what they always say, throw it all out. But I'll go out on the line on the limb, but just slightly right now. Bruins are going to really be up against it, against the Trojans. Well, they're not exactly setting the world on fire either these days. What, uh, two straight weeks, 21-point leads. 21 zip at South Bend, 21 zip against Stanford today. USC loses both football. This is Dan of South Carolina trying to get outside, does 35-40, cuts it in and gets to the 45-yard line. Small carrier. I'll tell you what, if I was faint of heart in dealing with the press, I wouldn't want to be a coach in Los Angeles next week. No, not going to be pleasant. The Wolves are going to be out. Uh, you know, with Bob Toledo, I think maybe not as much as Paul Hackett because Toledo coming on the heels of that successful season a year ago with the injury problems, reloading behind McNown and whatnot. Bandits again on the carry. So the Bruins actually want to stay in bounds and uh, keep the ball, uh, keep the clock moving as uh, there's a second down right at midfield here. Joyce. And now 
let's go to the sidelines and Larry Burnett, Larry. Well, guys, as big a game as this has been for Oregon State, it's been a tough day for Benny the Beaver. Benny is supposed to do push-ups every time the team scores, and he was supposed to do 55 the last time they scored. He did not make it. Benny the Beaver did not make it to 55. A uh, heartbreak here in Corvallis. And they're bringing the respirator out. Very disappointing, very disappointing. Benny said he was absolutely fit coming into this game. He felt good. Absolutely. Yeah. A little slant, and that's in and out of the hands. And you get it. And Martin, 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 position to uh, serve some time at quarterback. You know, the Beavers, David, now, after this game, and this was assuming they don't get the ball back, averaging 499 yards of offense per contest. That's number two in America. of Oregon State, they are uh, a team that moves it well. Uh, the team scores, it is incomplete yet another time, and I guess Oregon State is going to get the football back there. Randy Hicks, the tight end, was the intended receiver that time, and they'll take a knee here, I'm quite certain. Uh, call off the jam here. <laughs> Benny saying no more touchdowns inside the <laughs> helmet. Benny saying take the air out of the football right now. And we talked a lot about Farmer and the other injury problems. And, and one guy we failed to mention on UCLA's sideline, Brian Poley Dixon. That's right. Yeah, and he is one of the top receivers on the West Coast. So Bruins going to have to heal up a little bit. And he may have to look forward to the USC game in the year 2000. This well, could be a, one of those Y2K teams, Barry. <laughs> You know, the other thing, too, Dennis Erickson got a little bath there. The other thing, too, is that uh, to start things off, I don't believe Bobby Toledo and his staff expected to lose Chris Ferris to the draft. He was a third-round draft choice. He had told the coaching staff he planned to come back, and then he left. And I think that just sort of started the ball going in a downhill direction. Also, to come with some teams and some parity across the Pac-10. Once again, you got to give this Oregon State team, Dennis Erickson, all the credit in the world. They were very tough from the opening snap until the gun. Well, thanks to the guys in the group here, Joe Sullivan. Uh, some excellent numbers today, uh, keeping a, a game that uh, was a little bit out of hand interesting. And, uh, of course, Dick Quinlan, our spotter, has been with us for so long. Dennis Kirkpatrick, our uh, producer, and Michael Ireland for the great pictures today. Gary Garcia, the coordinating producer. And, Smith and Bill Borson were the executive producers of Pac-10 football, and this one was simply no contest. 55 to 7, the final score. Oregon State put 42 on UCLA in the first half and never looked back. They won the second half, too. They win it, and they win it handily, and they got to be thinking very serious thoughts about bowl games. Next Saturday, we'll be up in Berkeley. It'll be USC and California in another must game for both teams. That's a wrap for us from here in Corvallis. For my partners, David Norrie and Larry Burnett, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody. The totality of Beaver dominance stunned even the most ardent OSU fan. It started a four-game win streak that gave the Beavers their first winning season and first bowl game since 1965. See you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Brian Davis. This is FSN Classics.